This is an ornamental cherry tree. The patterns on the bark, or the structures known as lenticels, are very obvious. Lenticels allow air back and forth into the plant, particularly during the winter when it has no leaves. It still needs to have respiration, so it needs, so it needs oxygen, it still needs to give out carbon dioxide, so it needs a pervious bark. In wet weather, water runoff can form distinct patterns. And what's more, the amount of water running off in this point has encouraged so much growth of algae and moss that it appears to completely block the lenticels. It's said that some trees are able to respond to that by producing new growth and pushing off the outer bark to expose fresh lenticels that haven't been um, blocked up with growth. This runoff at the bottom here is made up of uh, dissolved organic carbons, in other words, uh, materials from the breakdown of uh, dead plants, or even living ones, which uh, form a sort of soapy effect, rather like the, um, the fume, the spume lines you get at sea, or the foam lines you get on uh, um, streams. Tree barks can be acidic as well. For instance, oak trees particularly have got very acidic bark uh, due to the tannins that are used um, in the old tanning industry, which are present in the bark and in the leaves. Tannic acids um, reducing the acidity. Lime trees are very prone to this. You tend to see this uh, foamy product at the base of lime trees frequently. Of course, the shape of a tree, there are natural uh, runoff channels where the water tends to accumulate and run 